Praise to the Most High. Happy to be able to teach again for the uh, Thursday night class. It's always a pleasure. I'll praise to the Most High. And today we're going to be going over uh, the topic, Romans chapter 9, the dagger in Christianity, okay? So dagger in sports, say you up <laughs> nine, six points, and they got a chance to maybe come back, and then you come down and you hit that dagger. Pow, like, dang, that's the dagger. It's over. All the momentum taken out of the building and everything. Right, that's a sports reference. But an actual dagger, of course, is a knife that strikes through for the kill and destroys, okay? So that's what we're going to go over today because the Bible actually has a dagger. The entire Bible is a dagger, but it's a lack of understanding for our people. They think that they know something, but they don't. Uh, yeah, we're going to jump into Romans chapter 9 here in just a moment. And uh, if it be the Lord's will, you get some edification. So brothers that are paying attention, make sure you uh, are paying attention. Make sure you got your, uh, your notebooks, your pens so on and so forth, your highlighters, because we're going to deal with uh, one of the letters of Paul today, okay? So let's roll, uh, where I want to start at? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let's read verse 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let's read verse 37. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 37. Mm -hmm. If any man think himself to be a prophet. So if any man think himself to be a prophet. Or spiritual. Or they say they're spiritual, go ahead. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you mm -hmm. are the commandments of the Lord. The things that Paul wrote were the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead. But if any man be ignorant, mm -hmm. let him be ignorant. Some people, they're going to be ignorant on purpose. They're going to literally see Jacob have I love, but Esau have I hate it. And they're just going to be ignorant on purpose. They're going to say hate doesn't mean what you think it means, brother. But our whole lives, hate always meant hate. You know what I'm saying? I hate that person. That means that's a strong, strong dislike for that person. I could do without that person. God said the same thing in the Bible regarding one of the nations. But for some reason, that's not what that means when it comes to your oppressor. So if they want to be ignorant, just let them be ignorant. I mean, I'm not going to argue forever back and forth, back and forth. If it ain't clicking in their mind, either it's not time for it to click or it's not going to click. And they'll be a part of the two third. I mean, that's what it is, you know. Um, go from there. Go to the book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse fifteen, regarding Paul's writing. So when we deal with the, the letters of Paul, brothers and sisters. There is confusion, uh, and the only reason it's confusion is because we have not understood, or have we been taught, nor have we been taught the true understanding of what Paul was speaking about. All right, and that's why I thank goodness, I thank God for our elders, Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Kenai, Bishop Yawasab, the deacons have been teaching us for years the true understanding of the letters of Paul so that we are able to um, be justified in our breakdowns of what we're bringing out regarding the true understanding of the scriptures. All right, so 2 Peter chapter 3, let's read verse 15. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Yes, sir. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul even also. Even as our beloved brother Paul, I'm sorry, go ahead. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Mm-hmm. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Some of the things that Paul wrote were hard to be understood. Some of Paul's letters, you read it and you have a, you're like, well, what is he saying? Is he saying the Gentiles can be saved? Is he saying that you don't have to keep the law? What is he saying? Because that's what it seems like. Because even during the time that he lived, there was a rumor about him that he was teaching the, the Jews that were among the Gentiles to forsake Moses and to not keep the law, to keep their children uncircumcised, all right? Paul had to go and clear that up. He and the other disciples, the apostles, had to clear it up. Like, that's not what he teaches. He walks orderly. He keeps the commandment. We're going to show you right here. And that's in Acts chapter 21 when that happened. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to read verse 15. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to read your four chapters. Go ahead. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And don't be ashamed to go precept upon precept. Because people say, you're taking it out of context. You're jumping all over the place. Well, obviously, you don't understand 2 Timothy 2.15. Because all Christians quote that. I remember my auntie used to quote that all the time. I had never read the Bible. She used to say, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing. I was like, I don't understand what that means. I don't read the Bible. But now I know. Precept, Paul, precept. Slide my, slide my keys. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. So it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's what we're supposed to do. Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10. 
Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10, regarding rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's see what that means. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who will God teach his knowledge to? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he going to make understand his doctrine? Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. Those that are weaned from the milk as a baby. Go ahead. And drawn from the breast. That are drawn from the breast. Meaning those that start off with the basics of the Bible, the true understanding of the scripture, right? From the foundation, Christ is black. We're the Israelites. We have to keep God's commandments. All nations will not be saved. These are basics, actually. Right? Go ahead. But precept must be upon precept. So precept has to be upon precept, meaning I have to be able to see it written multiple times in the Bible to get a true understanding. That's why we bounce all over the place and give you understanding within the text. See, a Christian doesn't understand that, and they can never understand that until they repent of their sins. This is why we'll go all over the Bible. We'll go to Revelation, to Matthew, to Genesis, back to Leviticus, to Exodus, going back forward to the Apocrypha, back to Revelation, back over here to Romans, and make a whole class put together. You'd be like, man, that makes clear sense to me now that I have the precepts. But before I read those precepts, I didn't understand. That's the goal. That is the, the, the reasoning for precept upon precept. God know what he's doing. Okay, stop trying to play God. Stop trying to say you know more than the Father. He's telling you, I'm going to keep the true understanding of my Bible hidden from those that don't want to keep the commandments. They'll read it from Genesis to Revelation as a novel, and they'll never get the true understanding. But my elect, they're going to keep my commandments. They're going to know who they are, and they're going to read precept upon precept. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept. Go ahead. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Read. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. Now, as we read Romans chapter 9 today, you're going to see the apostle Paul actually go precept upon precept. Right? And we're going to follow him through the precepts too to give a true understanding. Because one thing a Christian hate is Romans chapter 9. They will never, you never hear a Christian quote Romans chapter 9 unless they go to verse 24 and then all we got to do is go up in the chapter to show them what verse 24 is talking about. But I digress. And we're not going to, we're probably not going to get the whole chapter today, y'all, uh, obviously, because there's a lot in there. But let's start off with Romans chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Let's start off with Romans chapter 9, verse 1 yes, sir. and 2. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So Paul is saying, I say the truth in Christ. Pay attention to this. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So before we get too far into that, let's show that Paul had the Holy Ghost. Go to Rome, I mean, Acts, excuse me, chapter 9. I want you to read 15 through 18 just to show that the Apostle Paul did have the Holy Ghost. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 9 and verse 15. Go ahead. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. You're speaking about Paul. This is Ananias, right? And the Lord came to him and told him that Paul was going to come. His name was Saul at the time. A man named Saul was going to come to him. And he was like, I heard of this guy, Saul. He persecuting thy servants, Lord. He persecuting the believers on you, Lord. Why would I deal with such an evil man? And now the Lord says, what? But he is a chosen vessel unto me. Christ said, don't worry about that. He's a chosen vessel to me. Go ahead. To bear my name before the Gentiles yep. and kings and the children of Israel. Go ahead. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I'm going to show Paul how great things he must suffer. Keep that in your mind. Don't forget that. Paul is going to have to go through great things for Christ's name's sake. Paul is going to have to go through great things things for Christ's name's sake. Don't forget that. All right, come on. And Ananias went his way yep. and entered into the house. Go ahead. And putting his hands on him, Read. said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight. So you can have your sight back and what? And be filled with the Holy Ghost. And what? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. So when Ananias laid hands on Paul, he lost a Saul at that time. He was, he, the scales fell off his eyes. He was able to see again, and he received the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith 
and arose and was baptized. So Paul, uh, Saul was baptized at that particular time, right? So watch this. Go back to um, go back to the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. So I want to show you that Paul did have the Holy Spirit. He did have the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. I say the truth in Christ. Uh -huh. I lie not. Read. My conscience also bearing witness, bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. He said my conscience also bear witness in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Paul had the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So now he said I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Why did Paul have great heaviness? What was his heaviness for? Remember we read earlier in Acts chapter 9 what Christ said, I'm going to show. Go back to Acts 9, 15 for me real quick. Pay attention. There's a reason Paul said, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read that for me. Acts 9, 15. Go ahead. But the Lord said unto him, Go ahead. Go thy way. Go thy way, Paul. I mean, go thy way, Ananias. Go ahead. For he is a chosen vessel unto me. Paul is a chosen vessel unto me. Go ahead. To bear my name before the Gentiles. So he's going to have to go through trial and tribulation. He has to now go teach the Gentile. Go ahead. And kings. Go ahead. And the children of Israel. Go ahead. Watch this. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. For my name's sake. So I got to show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Go back to Romans chapter 9 again. Read verse 1 and 2 again. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Come on. I say the truth in Christ. I say the truth in Christ. I ain't lying. Go ahead. I lie not. Go ahead. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. And guess what? My conscience bear witness in the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Watch this. That I have great heaviness. And continual sorrow in my heart. And I got great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So the only, uh, the only way to understand what Paul is truly saying is to read the chapter before. Go to Romans chapter 8. I want you to read verse 33. Let's read down. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Go ahead. Who is he that condemned this? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So watch this. It said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who are he talking about? He talking about the scribes, the Pharisees, and the chief priests. Those Pharisees who were trying to convert to Christ and those Pharisees that had become followers of Christ that were in the church in Rome, that were leaders, that were teaching things contrary to what Paul was relaying to them. They were trying to push on the northern kingdom sacrifice. They kept wanting to put sacrifice and circumcision right away. It's like, no, nah. Paul was like, no. And when you read that all through Romans, well, Paul had to continue to let them know, like, look, Abraham received the promise while he was yet uncircumcised for his faith. Then the circumcision was a seal of the promise of his righteousness. So give the northern kingdom an opportunity to come into Christ, learn Christ, build up their faith. Then the brothers will get circumcised as a seal of their faith as a seal of their righteousness. So he said, y'all are trying to condemn them. That's why he said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. What does that mean? Who is he that condemneth? Watch this, Romans 8 and 1. What is Paul talking about? Romans chapter 8. I want you to read verse 1. Watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation to those that walk in the spirit and not in the flesh in Christ Jesus. Meaning we believe in Christ. We keep in the commandments. You can't condemn me. Only way I can be condemned is if I leave Christ. If I stop keeping the commandments. If I break the laws. That's the only way. Nothing that you say against me can come against me in an evil way to take me away from the love of Christ. You can't do it because God justifieth. That's why Christ died. So now, go back to Romans 8, 33 and 34 again. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Come on. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who going to lay something to the charge of God's elect? Who going to condemn us? Go ahead. It is God that justifies. God justifieth us through his son. Read. Who is he that condemneth? Who going to condemn the elect of God? Read. It is Christ that died. Christ already died. Read. Yea, rather, that is risen again. And he rose again. Go ahead. Who is even at the right hand of God. Read. Who also maketh intercession for us. So we got Christ in the heavens on the right hand of God making intercession for us. That's why we not condemned. That's why nobody can say, y'all Israelites evil, you wicked, you're cold. You can say all that, but you can't condemn us. Because we walk in Christ and keeping the commandments. 
at that time, those same spirits that's on them brothers and sisters in the Christian church today was on the Pharisees trying to condemn the believers of Christ. Oh, you don't keep the customs of the ancestors. You don't wash your hands, all that stuff. Y'all supposed to keep the law of Moses according to being circumcised on the eighth day. If you don't do that, you can't be saved. Paul was like, no, don't lay nothing to our charge. It is God that justifieth. Christ died for us and now is in the heavens making intercession for us. Therefore, you can't condemn us. Now, watch this. Go ahead. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who's going to separate us from that, no, not that non-condemnation, not being condemned? Who can separate us from that now? Christ loved us enough to die for us so that we won't be condemned if we believe on him and keep the commandments. There is therefore no condemnation. So now, who going to separate us from that love? Go ahead. Shot tribulation. So since we're going through trial and tribulations at the hands of our brothers, they're trying to harm us, they're trying to murder us. You understand? They're trying to uh, uh, say we a cult, we a hate group, trying to destroy our faith. Same thing back then, trying to get us to, to be brought before judge and magistrate, trying to get us killed by the Romans, killed by the government at that time. Is that going to separate us from Christ have, uh, having, uh, making intercession for us in the heavens and us not being condemned? No. That's what Paul's saying. Go ahead. Or distress. So distress. Go ahead. Or persecution. If you persecute us, go ahead. Or famine. Or we don't have any food. Go ahead. Or nakedness. Or we don't have any clothes. Go ahead. Or peril. Go ahead. Or sword. Is any of that going to stop us from being having intercession in the heavens? No. You, we not condemned because we go through trial and tribulation. That's not, that don't mean we condemned. You understand? Watch this. Keep reading. He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Read. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. That's why the followers of Christ go through so much right there. Sometimes you think, man, maybe I'm, in, maybe I'm wicked because we're going through persecution. Nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. You killed for Christ's name's sake. You persecuted for Christ's name's sake. He told us all throughout the scriptures, hey, the Lord, the servant is not above his Lord. The servant is not above his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. But still, there's no condemnation. Just because they persecute us, that's not going to separate us from Christ making intercession for us in the heavens. That's why Paul said the dead in Christ going to do what? Rise first. So we die in Christ and we get persecuted for Christ, we're going to rise first because there is no condemnation to us. Go ahead. Lord's will. Go ahead. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And even though we go through these things and we are going to go through these things, we still going to conquer if we keep the commandments and the faith in the Son because we're not condemned. Nobody can lay anything to our charge. Christ justifieth us. Go ahead. To him that loved us. Uh-huh. So that's how we're going to we conquer. Go ahead. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Death nor life. Nor angels. Nor angels. Those angels is going into uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, Pharisees in particular. Go to Colossians 2.18. It's not talking about a literal angel from heaven. It's talking about man, leaders, messengers. Watch this. Colossians 2.18. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Go ahead. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, mm. vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. See that? Them angels ain't talking about the angels from heaven. That's talking about a man, a man. Who was that man? Those, those leaders at that time trying to condemn our brothers and sisters for not uh, having respect to any holy day like the new moon or the Sabbaths or any other holy days, meaning for meat offerings and drink offerings. They said, look, don't let them. They puffed up in their fleshly mind. They don't know nothing. They want you to worship the leaders. Paul like, nah, we're not worshiping them leaders. You understand? We're going to do what the Lord says. Go back. Romans chapter 8. Come on. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities. Nor principalities. That will be Rome and all them. That will be the leaders of Israel. That will be Rome at that time. Go ahead. Nor powers. That will be their government. Go ahead. Nor things present. Nor things present. The things that we currently going through and we currently enduring. Go ahead. Nor things to come. Nor the things to come. That's talking about us in these last days. The things that we go through. Go ahead. Nor height nor depth, read. nor any other creature no, read. Go ahead. shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nobody is going to be able to separate us from that love. Christ is in the heavens making intercession for us. We are only condemned when we blaspheme the Holy Ghost. If we blaspheme the Holy Ghost and we lead this truth and we go back into our sin, go back into the world, all of a sudden we ain't Israelites no more, all of a sudden we ain't got to keep the commandments no more, you start speaking against this truth, that's the only way you condemn. So they put us to death for this truth, it don't matter, we're going to rise. If they persecute us for this truth, it don't matter, we're going to overcome. 
if we go through famine for this truth, it don't matter. We're going to eat. If we go through, uh, what else it said, nakedness for this truth, don't worry. A brother or sister going to come by and give me a shirt. It is what it is. We're going to be clothed. We're not condemned. So now, continue to read chapter 9, verse 1. Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. Come on. I say the truth in Christ. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So I lie not. Why? Why is he not lying? Because we read in Acts chapter 9, Christ, I got to show him. He got to go through great things for my name's sake. Go ahead. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Read. That I have great heaviness uh -huh. and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So now Paul is saying, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. Paul said, I got great heaviness in my heart because I know y'all going to go through it. I know we going, I know I'm going to go through it. You think, I mean, all our forefathers had to comfort themselves before the destruction, but that don't mean that they never had a spirit of fear jump on them. That don't mean they never had a, remember, even Christ at the end before he died, he even said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass by me, but only if it's your will. Not mine. You understand? If there's any way I can go, I don't have to go through this, let me not have to go through it. But only if it's your will. But if it's your will, I'm going to go through it. That's the same thing the Apostle Paul said. He said, I got continual heaviness in my heart because I know, based on what I read earlier, although we will conquer, we still have to go through it. Right? Give me that real quick in Hebrews 10 and 34. Watch this. She said, man, I wish I could just take it all for Israel like Christ did. That way y'all ain't got to go through it. Because I already know. I already seen it. Christ has showed me. You're going to have to go through it. You're going to have to endure. Read that for me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. Come on. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds. Go ahead. And took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. See, that took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Go ahead. Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Go ahead. Watch this. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. And don't cast away the confidence. See, we know that we're going to have to go through some things. We know some of us are going to lose some things. But the Bible says right here, but don't cast away your confidence. What is your confidence? We more than conquerors. We're going to get through it. There is no condemnation. They can come and do whatever they want to do. They can't condemn us. They can't stop us from getting the kingdom. Can't nobody stop you from getting the kingdom, brothers and sisters, but you. You the only one that can stop you from the kingdom. That's why Christ said the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's in you. It's yours to obtain. You understand? It's, it's all in your power. You want death, death is there for you. But if you want life, life is there for you. That's what he's saying. So he said, don't cast away your confidence. Go ahead. Which has great recompense of reward. It has great recompense of reward. Go ahead. For ye have need of patience. That shall after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So you got to have patience. Because some of us are going to die. Some of us are going to have things taken from us. Some of us are going to have, go to prison. During that time, brothers and sisters, we got to remain patient. Don't cast off the confidence. You know that your faith comes with a reward. You know that there's a promise that comes with what we have to go through. Long as we stay in the will of God. Give me Psalms 40 and 8 so we know what the will of God is. Long as we stay within the will of God, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Read that for me, Psalms 40, verse 8. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law, thy law, thy law is within my heart. Brothers and sisters, you got to love God's laws. We got to love to be righteous. We got to love to keep the Sabbath. We got to love to keep the new moons. We got to love to wear our fringes. We got to love to have our beard on our face. We got to love to not look at a woman when she passed by. We got to love not to lust after a man if you're a woman. Or even some brothers that may deal with a, a, a tad bit of homosexuality from out the world. You got to love. I ain't looking at that. Hell no. Righteousness, man. You understand? No, no, no. Put on a dress. You wearing a dress from here on out. Throw all them jeans away. You putting dresses on from here on out. Until Christ come. You understand? You ain't wearing no pants when Christ come either. But you know what I mean. Until death, until Christ return. We're going to do what God says do. We're going to stay within the will of God. We must delight in it. That's how we not condemn. That's how we conquer. You can't tell a Christian that. But we read this to a Christian right now. That, no, no. What died in? Just die. Because we trying to conquer. We know we're going to go through it for Christ's name's sake. They talking about this church blitz. They're persecuting us. How? 
By reading Bibles? How you being persecuted? How you being jumped on, lied to, murdered, put in prison? They're not doing that to no Christian. They're doing that to the sons of God. They're doing that to the daughters of God. You understand? Watch this. Go back to where you was at. What was at? Romans chapter 9? Yeah, read Romans 9. Um, no, give me Galatians 3 and 3. This is why Paul was on the Galatians so hard, man. Galatians 3 and 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? You started in the spirit. Go ahead. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Now you're trying to go back to animal sacrifice? That ain't how you learn Christ. You learn Christ through me teaching it to you and the Holy Spirit coming upon you. You didn't learn Christ by animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Have you suffered so many things in vain? You went through all that in vain? The spoiling of your goods, being persecuted, being thrown out of your houses, going through famine, going through tribulation. Some of your ancestors, some of your foremothers and forefathers killed. You went through all that just to sit around and go right back to animal sacrifice. You went through all that just to go back to Christianity? To leave Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Whatever we go through can't separate us. Because there is no condemnation. God justifies us. They can't lay nothing to our charge. These Christians out here lying on us. We don't give a damn. We're going to still teach. We're still going to the church of the blitz. We're not stopping. Because there is no condemnation. The angels with us. The angels ain't with you. The angels with us. Until the Lord tell the angels fall back. It's his time. Then it is what it is. But therefore, there is no condemnation. Why? Because we walked in Christ Jesus and kept the commandments. You understand that? Go back to Romans 9 now. So Paul said, you foolish Galatians, you don't went through all that for nothing. You don't went through all that persecution for nothing just to go back to animal sacrifice or go to something that, because the Galatians weren't ever in animal sacrifice. Watch this, Romans 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ go for ahead. my brethren. Go for my brethren. Go ahead. My kinsmen. My kinsmen. According to the flesh. So Paul said, I wish that I could take on the brunt of the persecution for my brothers. I wish that I could be a curse from Christ for my brothers. But we all got to go through it. Every man, every woman has to go through it. Uh, Acts 14, 22. Every last one of us. So Paul, then you know, he's like, look, man, hey, I wish that I can go through it for y'all, but I can't go through it for y'all. That's why I read chapter 8 for you. I got to continue sorrow in my heart because I know that some of y'all don't know what y'all finna get into. But at the end of the day, just remember, we conquerors. Go ahead. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Go ahead. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. To continue in the faith. And that we must do much tribulation. Uh-huh. Enter into the kingdom of God. Read. And when they had ordained them elders in every church. Go ahead. And had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. You see that? He said, look, we had to go and confirm the brothers and sisters. Watch this. Read, um, just, just for sake. Uh, read verse 19. Verse 19. Come on. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul. And they stoned the apostle Paul. Go ahead. Drew him out of the city. Read. Supposing he had been dead. They thought he was dead because he was dead. That's why he said, I was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. He had an out of, uh, what they call an out of body experience. Paul went into the heavens and saw everything that was up there. And the Lord said, hey, don't you sell, don't you write nothing down that you've seen up here. I, he said, I can't tell y'all what I saw. Y'all probably wouldn't believe me anyway. you probably think I was crazy. Paul died. They killed the apostle. Now, watch this, verse 20. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, Go ahead. he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. So Paul was resurrected by their disciples. They stood around him and prayed for him. And the spirit came back into his body. And he got up and did what? And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. You hear that? For you brothers that know what we, for you brothers that know, just, you, I ain't got to say it, you know, we going back to teach. You understand that? We ain't backing down to nobody. We going to teach this word. You understand? Our apostle Paul the, our forefather, the apostle Paul, and our brothers, the disciples, are a true testament of persecution and getting back up and going back to the same city to teach the word of God. Ain't nobody running us off. Ain't nobody running us away. We know why we got a mission. It's people in these churches that's going to repent. 
You understand? That's why he said right here, hey, look, when they when Paul died, they went to Lystra, they went to Derby. I mean, they went to, excuse me, they went to Derby, and then they came back to Lystra, and then to Iconium and Antioch, where he had just been stoned and put to death there. And you know his injuries weren't just like, you know he still had injuries from that thing. Bust lip, still on the side of his head. Hey, we back, though. You understand? That thing got me fired up, man. You understand? Our forefathers were real men of the most high. Real men of the most high don't back down to nobody. Read. Confirming the souls of the disciples. And, he gonna, and, that, and by him doing that, by his example, what did he do? Confirming the souls of the disciples. It was confirmed that he was an apostle of the most high God. So if you get persecuted for this truth, if you get beat up for this truth, if you get knocked out for this truth, guess what? You're a disciple of Christ. Your soul being confirmed. There is no condemnation. Don't let nobody condemn you. You walking in Christ Jesus. You ain't walking after the spirit. You keeping God's commandments. If you get persecuted for it, so be it. Get back up and applaud and say, thank you, Lord, that I was persecuted for your name's sake. Like our forefathers. They went and confirmed the disciple, let them know. Hey, don't y'all back down to nobody. I, I wish I could have been there. I know it was a mighty speech. I know Paul and Barnabas and they were like, hey, you see what happened to me? They put me to death, but I'm back by the grace of the Lord. And we're going back to the same city and we're going to teach the word of God. You understand that? So the, he had to confirm the souls of the disciples. Go ahead. And exhorting them. And then exhort them to do what? To continue in the faith. Man, y'all keep on teaching, bro. I know they knocked me out. I know they killed me, but guess what? I'm back. The disciples prayed for me, and I'm back. Now we're going to go to the same city and prophesy. And don't ever back down to nobody. You go back in the spirit of the Lord, and you teach the word of God. That's why you ain't running us off no camp spot. We coming right back. The only people going to make us move is that we get a threat to be arrested by the authorities for being on, public, I mean, on private property. Then we in the wrong because we breaking the laws of the land. So we're going to get on public property and teach this word. Just like our ancestors, Acts of the Apostles continued. Read. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So we had to go through much tribulation to enter the kingdom of God. We have to go through it. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, we got to be persecuted for the name of Christ because we the followers of Christ. But guess what? He made intercession for us, and nobody can separate us from his love. Go ahead. And when they had ordained them elders in every church. You know why they ordained elders in every church? They saw the men. They said, yo, this dude right here, a warrior, man, set him up. Oh, that brother over there, a warrior, he know the scriptures and he ain't backing down. We done confirmed his soul. Hey, take him back out there and teach at that same spot next week. Take him back out there and teach over there. You understand? Go ahead. And had prayed with fasting. Go ahead. They commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. On whom they believed. Go back to Romans 9. Verse 3 again. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. Uh -huh. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now go to John chapter 15, verse 12 through 13. John chapter 15, verse 12 through 13. Watch this. This is what Paul's saying. He's saying the same thing that our, uh, our, our king of kings, Jesus Christ, told us. Go ahead. John chapter 15, verse 12. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another. This is my commandment, that you brothers and you sisters love one another. All they bickering and fighting back and forth y'all be doing up in the congregation, y'all need to repent from that thing. Y'all grown. Y'all supposed to make it right. Y'all sit up there arguing over BS, arguing with your Lord over BS, arguing with your wife over BS, arguing with your sister and brother over BS. You're supposed to let all that go. They too, we too old for that. We're trying to confirm the souls of the disciples. Brothers and sisters are getting persecuted for the name of Christ, losing their jobs for the name of Christ, being lied on and slandered by family members. When they start putting us to death, uh, the Bible says, love of many going to wax cold. Many people going to turn their back on this truth, turn their back on their brothers who they once shalomed every Sabbath and said, man, I'll die for you. Don't tell me that. Show me by your actions. Because I done been among some people that'll die for me. And they ain't had to tell me they was going to die for me. I just already knew that they was going to ride. When we go out here to Africa, it'd be me and one of, and Deacon Isaac by ourselves. With six or seven brothers going against the whole country of Ghana. 
You understand that? Same thing when we go to, to, to you done heard the stories. Bitches done told you the stories. We be down there six deep, and it be 700 people up there, up top. We down in the trench. All they got to do is jump down there. They going to overpower us. It's 700 of them. You understand? That's why you got to let all that pettiness go. Read. Or, or you know what else? Hating to take correction. Or sister correct you, and you got the screw face. For what? If you're wrong, you're wrong. You know, because you don't look at that sister as being a woman of God. That's what it is. Oh, I love you, sissy. Shalom, sissy. Shalom, sis. But if she corrects you about your dress being too tight, now you want to look all screw face. You understand? That's, you don't look at her as a woman of God. Same thing on the men's side. Men, a brother corrects you, you're looking at the screw face, looking all mad. You don't look at that man as a man of God. That's why. Read. This is my commandment that ye love one another. Love one another. Go ahead. As I have loved you. As I have loved you. Go ahead. Watch this. Greater love have no man Read. than this. Go ahead. That a man lay down his life for his friends. The Bible says no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. When we out there teaching, you're supposed to lay your life down for your brothers. You understand that? We, we, are, one, we are one in one spirit, one gospel, one baptism. When we out there teaching, because when we out there teaching, it do get hostile. Be leery of brothers that run. Be leery of brothers that ain't never be found when stuff go down. That's why the Bible say love, that's the true love, that you lay down your life for your friend. Now watch what Christ said in the next verse. Ye are my friends. He said, you my friends. Read. If ye do whatsoever I command you. If you do whatsoever I command you. So wait a minute. If I lay my life down for you, I'm the friend of Christ? Damn. If I love you, then me and Christ friends. Because Christ in you. That's why when they try to say it don't matter what color Jesus is, to hell with you. You understand? Because Christ in my brother. Christ in my sister. And we got to be willing to lay down our lives for one another. And guess what? You can't lay your life down for your brother if you can't even respect him. You can't lay your life down for your sister if you don't even know how to be able to uh, bite your lip and keep your mouth shut when you get corrected, right? Watch this. Go to, uh, where we at? Well, I say, you know, I be going. Yeah, I get to get in the spirit and everything go left. Uh, go back to Romans 9. And, well, read verse 10. From, read chapter 10, verse 1 for me. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Lay down your life for your friends. That's what the Bible says. Christ, Paul said he wished that he could be a curse from Christ for his brethren. He knew his brothers and his sisters were going to go through it. Watch this, verse, chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is Read. that they might be saved. That what? That they might be saved. Our goal is that our people going to be saved, man. That's what we out there doing. You think we out there for the, for the YouTube? Man, the hell with the YouTube video likes, man, and the views. We know millions of people watching Bishop Nathaniel, but they not showing the numbers. So if you get caught up in numbers, you're going to always be disappointed. But if you ain't out there for the numbers, you out there because you want Israel to be saved, then Christ with you. That's what we there for. That's what you brothers and you sisters called into this truth for, to be an example. For who? For Israel. Because some of us might die, and the people that come in never meet us, but watch our videos. Like, damn, that dude, Captain Get Alive, man, he was mighty in the spirit. I wish I could have met that brother. If they put me to death before Christ returned, That'll be a legacy left behind. Hey, check his videos out. You can always hear his voice. Go listen to Bishop Nathaniel, Deacons, all our captains, all the mighty men that came before us. If something were to happen to him or happen to them, if it be the Lord's will, we can't control it. If something happens to some of our leaders, we go back and, hey, press play on their video. Ooh, -hoo! that's a prophet right there. That man was a mighty prophet of the most. I think about these brothers that done died over the last years. We go back and watch their videos. Officer Sephalakai here in Mississippi and some of the other brothers that done died. And we go watch their video. They still with us. And they did everything they did so that Israel might be saved. Well, guess what? Just like Paul, our, that's the same spirit we got to have. We're looking for Israel to be saved. That's why we go out there and we teach. Go back to Romans 9. Let's read 4 now. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption. Go ahead. And the glory. Read. And the covenant. Read. And the giving of the law. And the service of God uh -huh. and the promises. And the promises. So we read in chapter, let's read 3 and 4 together real quick. I'm going to show you something. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. 
For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. So I can wish that myself were accursed from Christ. Go ahead. For my brethren. For my brother, because I know my brothers and sisters going to have to go through it when I'm dead and gone. They're going to go through it. Read. My kinsmen. My kinsmen, read. According to the flesh. Stop right there. Go to the book of um, Romans chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. So I don't understand a Christian telling me that Paul was writing to the Gentiles. That don't make no sense to me. The, the, the prophecy, the scripture says he wished he could be a curse from Christ for his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Give me Romans 11 and 1. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? Come on. God forbid. God forbid. Come on. For I also am an Israelite. I'm an Israelite too. Paul said, I'm an Israelite too. Go ahead. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead. God have not cast away his people, uh -huh. which he foreknew. God foreknew us. He knew us from the beginning. Before there was ever a nation, he already knew he was going to set us up. That's why when you read in Genesis uh, chapter 21, he told Abraham, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. That was before Israel was even born. Read. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? Uh -huh. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, uh, saying. Against Israel, saying. Go back to Romans 9. Pick up at verse 4. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? So the Israelites is Paul's brethren, his kinsmen, because he himself was an Israelite. And he knew that the Lord foreknew the Israelites and would never cast them away. I don't understand you Christians. You don't understand the word of God. Right? Read. To whom pertained the adoption? So I said, to whom pertained the adoption? Let's deal with the adoption real quick. Galatians 4 and 4. What do you mean the adoption? To whom pertained the adoption? The adoption. The adoption. Galatians chapter 4, and let's read verse 4. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. Come on. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. God made, sent forth his son, read. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. There you go right there. Christ, Christ was made under the law. Meaning what? Christ was circumcised the eighth day. Christ kept the commandments. He was made under the law. Read. To redeem them that were under the law. Wait a minute. To who? To redeem them. That were under the law. So he lived a perfect life according to the commandments so he could redeem those that were under the law. Under what law? The law of animal sacrifice. From the beginning, our ancestors was under that law. Who was the law given to? The Israelites. Go ahead. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Said so we might receive the adoption of sons. Pull up that screenshot I sent you off the Malachi. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Adoption, adoption, adoption. You may say, well, adoption by definition is somebody who was not your actual child that you adopted in. Well, how was they under the law then? How was they under the law if they was never uh, the, the children of God? Something happened. Something happened for them not to be called the children of God. Could you read that for me? I mean, could you pull it up for me? There's a screenshot I sent you in your DM. Let's read the, uh, the top one also. Yes, sir. Adoption, adoption as sons. That relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites mm. in preference to all other nations. That's what adoption means. The adoption of sons is talking about the Israelites. The Israelites, the Israelites, the Israelites. Okay, go back to the scripture. Thank you, officer. Go back to the scripture, Galatians 4 and 5 again. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Go ahead. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. Go ahead. That we might receive the adoption of sons. That the Israelites might receive the adoption of sons. The adoption of sons. The adoption of sons. Go ahead. And because you are sons. And because you are sons, read. God has sent forth the spirit of his son uh -huh. into your hearts. Read. Crying, Abba. Father. Now watch this. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, because you still might be confused. You said, well, I thought adoption of sons, I thought that meant somebody that was never an Israelite. No, on the contrary. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Read. Who are called uncircumcision. Who are called uncircumcision. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So the southern kingdom was called the northern kingdom, the un circumcision. How do we know that? Go to Acts chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. How do we know that the southern kingdom used to call their brothers, the northern kingdom, the uncircumcision? Let's see. The book of Acts chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Go ahead. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, 
They that were of the circumcision. And who was in Jerusalem that was the circumcision? Those were the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. Go ahead. Contended with him. They contended with him and said what? Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Who was the men that he went into uncircumcised? Go to Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Called Cornelius, go ahead. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. Read. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Where do you ever read that a heathen feared God with all his heart? They were devout. You don't never read that. You hadn't read that. Now I want you to skip down real quick to verse 28. Verse 28. Come on. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Read. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So now he's talking to Cornelius and all those of his house. He said, now you know there's an unlawful thing for a Jew to come unto one of another nation. Right? But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Skip down to 34. Let's see what he's talking about. Verse 34. Go ahead. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. You know what? Based off the vision that I had and based off me now being amongst you northern kingdom brothers and sisters or you Gentile. Let's just say Gentile. I'm not even exposed northern kingdom yet. Let's just say Gentile. Me being around you, you, you Gentile brothers, I realize God ain't no respecter of persons. I see, that, I see everything coming to pass now. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. But in every nation, uh -huh. he that feareth him, he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. Uh -huh. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, Read. preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. So that uncircumcision were Israelites. The Jews had no dealings with the uh, northern kingdom of Israel. Give me John chapter four. John chapter four. I want you to read verse 9 for me. The book of John, chapter 4 and verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, Thou being a Jew, askest drink of me? You asking me for drink, read. Which am a woman of Samaria. Because I'm a woman of Samaria, read. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. For the Jews, because the Jews don't deal with the Samaritans. Could you give me that real quick in Isaiah? Who are the Samaritans? Who dwelt in Samaria? Isaiah 7 and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 8. Come on. For the head of Syria is Damascus, uh -huh. and the head of Damascus is resin. Uh -huh. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. So the northern kingdom were broken, that they were not a people. Continue to read. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And what's the head of Ephraim? Samaria. The Ephraimites and all of the northern kingdom dwell in Samaria, northern Israel. So now, go back to John 4. Read again. John chapter 4, verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, uh -huh. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Read. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews don't deal with the Samaritans. So Peter was on point when he said, Now you know that it's an unlawful thing for a Jew to come unto one of another nation. But now I see that I can't call any man common or, clean, or unclean. Now I see... That God is not a respect of persons. That in every nation, they that fear God, right, and are called according to his name, shall be saved. The, the word which God has sent, who it? Unto the children of Israel. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Now, let's see what happened when Christ was talking to this sister. Read verse 11 now. Verse 11. Come on. The woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Go ahead. And the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Come on, watch this. Are thou greater than our father, Jacob? Are y'all what? We what? Greater than our father, Jacob? The woman of Samaria, the uncircumcised, Cornelius and his household, the Gentiles, were Israelites. That's what he's trying to show you. So go back to Ephesians 2 and 11 again. The Ephesians book. chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, Go ahead. who are called uncircumcision. Who are called uncircumcision. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Read. That at that time, you were without Christ. So at that time, you were without Christ. Because remember, Ephraim was broken that they be not a people. Go ahead. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. They were aliens from the temple. The commonwealth of Israel. The promises. Go ahead. 
And strangers from the covenants of promise. And they were strangers from the covenants of promise. Many of them grew up without God's laws. Read. Having no hope and without God in the world. And they were just living to die, basically. No hope of salvation because Christ hadn't come and died for them. Anyway, they couldn't keep the law. They couldn't go into the temple. Read. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Go ahead. Remember, we're dealing with the adoption. Go ahead. For he is our peace. He is our peace. Who have made both one. Go ahead. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Read. Come on. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Read. For to make in himself of twain one new man. And that uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, 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 meaning what? Rituals, meaning traditions of the elders, things that were imposed on them until the time of reformation. That's talking about the law of animal sacrifice. But just for the sake of nobody, of some people don't know, get Hebrew 9 and 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. Which was a figure for the time then present, uh -huh. in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that did the service perfect. Go ahead. As pertaining to the conscience. As pertaining to the conscience. Come on. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings mm -hmm. and carnal ordinances. Carnal what? Ordinances. Read. Imposed on them. Until the time of reformation. Until the time of Christ. Then when Christ came and died, we no longer go through those carnal ordinances. The Jews couldn't understand that that was only for a time. That's why it says, go back to um, um, Ephesians 2.15. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Come on. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, but to make in himself of twain one new man. One new man. So making peace. Uh-huh. And that he might reconcile both unto God Read. in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, Read. and came. Oh, I'm sorry. Read verse 16 again. I, mi I missed it. Verse 16. Come on. And that he might reconcile both unto God. What do you mean reconcile? Because if the adoption is talking about somebody who was never God's children, then why in the world does it say right here that he was going to reconcile them? The word reconcile means what? To bring back, to return. To repair our relationship. Why, who needed their relationship repaired with God that was dealing with him at one time and now God ain't dealing with him no more? The northern kingdom of Israel. That's who. That's who the adoption of sons is talking about. Now, go back to Romans 9, verse 4. I know I'm, I'm going all over the place. I'm going to try to run through it. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm sitting on my wallet, killing my hip. Read it in. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption. To whom pertain the adoption. The adoption of who? The adoption of the Israelites back to God. Come back to me. Read. And the glory. Let's deal with the glory real quick. Acts 1 and 6. What do you mean the glory? Acts chapter 1, verse 6. The book of Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Come on. When they therefore were come together. Read. They asked of him, saying. Come on. Lord. Without at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Will you give the kingdom back to Israel? Will you give us rulership back on this earth? Is it ours to take back again, Lord, now? Is it this time? Is it the time now? That's a glorious thing. Watch this. Go real quick. Go to uh, the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, verse 3. We're going to read the 7. Read it kind of quick. The book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. Yep. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, mm -hmm. and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. They're going to be his people. And God himself shall be with them mm. and be their God. Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And so we'll never cry again. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death. And we won't die again. Read. Neither sorrow. And we won't be worried about uh, sorrow of losing family members, sicknesses, losing children, dying, going through heartache and pain, tribulation, all those things that Paul said we was going to have to endure for Christ's name's sake. But yet. We still not condemn. You see how it all go together? It all go together. There is no condemnation to them that in Christ. This is what we hoping for. These are the promises. Go ahead. Nor crying. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any more pain. Go ahead. For the former things are passed away. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Read. And I will be his God, uh -huh. and he shall be my son. That's the adoption of sons right there. That's for the Israelites. Watch this, 12. Verse 12. Come on. And had a wall great and high, Read. and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, Read. and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's the glory. 
that the kingdom of heaven is for you and for you only. And there's many more scriptures on it, all right? Go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. He said, to whom pertained the adoption and the glory. Watch this. Daniel 7, let's read 27. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. Come on. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Read. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh -huh. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. So our kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. That's the glory. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 41. Come on. There's one glory of the sun, another of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Start at 40. Verse 40. There are also celestial bodies. There are also celestial bodies. Celestial, celestial, meaning angelic, of heaven. Go ahead. And bodies terrestrial. And it terrestrial means of the earth, like what our human bodies are right now. Go ahead. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. They have two different glories. Go ahead. There was one glory of the sun, another of the moon. They sort of, even the sun and the moon got different bodies. Go ahead. And another glory of the stars. And, the, and the, the stars have a different angelic body. Go ahead. For one star differs from another star in glory. All the stars are different from each other in glory. That's some, that's some heavy stuff right there. That's too deep for me. Go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Read. It is sown in corruption. So we sown in corruption. Read. It is raised in incorruption. Read. It is sown in dishonor. So right now our body is dishonorable. Go ahead. It is raised in glory. But when it get raised, it's going to be raised in glory. That's for the Israelites. That ain't for all nations. All nations not finna be immortal. All nations not finna be angelic. All nations not finna have power. All nations not finna rule this earth. That's for the Israelites. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. Go ahead. It is raised in power. It is, it is sown in weakness, but it's raised in power. When we come back, we're going to have power. That's the glory of the kingdom of God. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Uh huh. It is raised a spiritual We're body. We're going to be raised a spiritual body. Skip down to verse 50. Verse 50. Now, this I say, brethren, uh -huh. that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because you can't get into the kingdom being flesh and blood, this weak body that we got, this sinful nature that we got. Come on. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And guess what? Corruption is not going to inherit incorruption. Just the kingdom of heaven is incorruption. Your body is corrupted. Go ahead. Behold. I show you a mystery. I'm going to show you this mystery. Come on. We shall not all sleep. Not all of us are going to sleep. No, we're not all going to die before Christ return. Read. But we shall all be changed. But if you're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You're going to be changed. It don't matter if they persecute you. It don't matter if you go through famine, distress, uh, nakedness, perils. It don't matter. You keep these commandments. You walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. You will not be condemned. You're going to get the kingdom. You're going to be raised incorruptible. You understand? You're going to be changed. Read. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Read. At the last trump. When that last trumpet go off. Read. For the trumpet shall sound. When you hear that trumpet sound, come on. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And you're going to be raised incorruptible. Read. And we shall be changed. Read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. That's the glory of the kingdom of heaven. That, and that's only for the Israelites. All nations up here talking about, yeah, you know, I'm going to be raised incorruptible. No, you're not. You're going to be raised a man. That's how we're going to be able to crack you over the top of your head with a rod of iron. You're not going to be immortal. We going to be immortal. We will not be harmed. You going to be raised in corruption. You still going to be corrupt. <laughs> Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. Come on. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Read. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Read. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Go ahead. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death going to be swallowed up in victory. There will be no death. We're going to get the victory over death. Remember he said in all this we more than conquerors. The whole Bible go together. Paul saying the same thing over and over. Go ahead. Oh, death, where is thy sting? And so now where is the sting of death now? What death going to do to us now when we incorruptible, when we immortal? Death can't do nothing. Oh, that's all you got? You going to put us to death? Well, guess what? I'm going to be raised up and I'll never die again. That's what we read in Revelation 21 as well. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Go ahead. Oh, grave, where's thy victory? And the grave not going to have a victory because right now when you die, you get put in that grave. And that grave, is you in that, in that ground. That is now your, in, your inhabitant. That's now where you dwell at. But in that day, when we raised incorruptible, that you're going to look at that grave and it's like, where your sting at, huh? I was dead, now I'm back. 
Look, you, yeah, I was dead down in the grave. Yeah, they put me in a little dirty coffin. But guess what? Look at me. Now I'm back. Now where your sting at? Now where your victory at, oh, uh, old grave? There is no victory. You understand that? Watch this. Go back. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. I know we're only in the fourth verse. We're going to finish the chapter. Not today, though. Go ahead. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are the Israelites? Who are the Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption. So the adoption for the Israelites. And the glory. And the glory of the kingdom of heaven, that's for the Israelites. Read. And the covenants. Give me Hebrews 8 and 7. We're going to read 7 through 10 real quick. I'm going to try to run through it kind of fast. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. Come on. For if that first covenant had been faultless. If the first covenant had been faultless. Then should no place have been sought for the second. Go ahead. For finding fault with them, he saith. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Read. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm. and the house of Judah. So that's telling you the first covenant was with who? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Guess what? The covenant is not going to be the same covenant that he made with the fathers of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which was that first covenant. Go ahead. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. What you going to do? Because they continued not in my covenant. Because they didn't continue in the covenant. We didn't keep it. We broke it. Go ahead. And I regarded them not, and said Christ, the Lord. And the Lord said he, re he regarded us not, meaning what? He put us in slavery. That's what it means, he regarded us not. He put us in slavery. Go ahead. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. Read. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Man, this Bible is so beautiful how it just perfectly joined together. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a marching band or like a, I don't know, like a, a band that play together so well. It's like the music just perfectly, the chords just hit at the right time. Everybody on one accord. You know when to do this. I know when to do that. We don't over talk each other. The, the, the melodies, the music don't over, over run into one another to make it sound bad. It's like a perfect symphony. That's this Bible, man. It's just, all, this, all these scriptures saying the same exact thing. I don't understand how you read it and see all nations. The covenants with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, then they'll just plug their own understanding into it and say, yeah, but that's talking about spiritual Israel. So are you spiritually the house of Judah or are you spiritually the house of Israel? Which one you is? I don't understand it. Because they always say that, oh, it's talking about spiritual Israel. So which spiritual tribe are you? Are you spiritual Naphtali? Are you spiritual Judah? Are you spiritual Benjamin? Are you spiritual Issachar? Oh, you spiritual Asher. Are oh, you spiritual uh, 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 Zebulon, Reuben? Oh, okay. All right, how do you identify that? Where in the Bible does it tell you which spiritual tribe you're going to be in? Man, stop that mess, man. This Bible for the Israelites. You understand? Go back to Romans 4, 9. Let's read 4 again. I know we almost, we only done for verse 4. Have mercy on me. Go ahead. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption. We read what that was. And the glory. Mm -hmm. And the covenant. Mm -hmm. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. Psalm 785. Let me break it all the way down, man. I don't want y'all to be, I want you brothers to be elite. When you teach the word, we want you to have all to understand. That's what the bishops and deacons have been doing for years. Why do you think they go over the same classes all the time and add just a little bit more to it based off the understanding that the Lord gives them and how the water rises? You go back and watch them older classes of the bishop, they're going over the same things they was going over then. I watch, I, I study <laughs> bishop. Bishop Nathaniel and the other bishops. I be studying how they be moving. Like, Bishop don't want to pull. He'll pull Romans 9 and verse 4, and he'll break it down. He'll go through all the precepts to show you every little part. Even though he's been teaching that for years, he'll go through um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, the uh, desire to sincere milk of the word. And then he'll go to Deuteronomy 6 and 7 to show you what the milk is. you like, but he's been going over that for years. 30 years he's been going over that. Why he feel the need to continue to go back to that every single time? Because I'm telling you, this word got to be taught. We need the, the tools. And our, our leaders are here. Why the Lord has blessed us with our leaders, we need to learn these things. That's why it's over and over and over. It's repetitive over and over and over. Because that confidence, that's why you don't cast away your confidence because you done read this thing over and over and over and over. You done built your faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Understand? Go back. Psalms chapter 78 verse 5. Yes, sir. For he established a testimony in Jacob. He established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. And appointed a law in Israel. Is that it on it? Which he have, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. Go back to Romans 9 and 4. Romans 9 verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? 
to whom pertaineth the adoption. The adoption for the Israelites. And the glory. The glory for the Israelites. And the covenant. The covenant for the Israelites. And the giving of the law. The giving of the law was given to the Israelites. And the service of God. You know what I want? Leviticus 25. What is it, 55? Watch this. Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 55. The book of Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. Go ahead. They are my servants. They are my servant. <laughs> oh, God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Go to Isaiah 45 and, and 45 and 4. I'm just, I don't understand. What are we doing? What's going on? The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I call thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So he said, Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Go back one chapter, the first verse. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, mm. and Israel, whom I have chosen. I mean, you can, take, you can decipher what you want to decipher from that, but I think it's very clear. Go back to Romans 9 and 4. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites. Who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption. To whom pertaineth the adoption. Go ahead. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. Uh-huh. And the service of God. And the service of God. We just read that Israel is God's service. Go ahead. And the promises. And the promises. Go to Luke chapter 1, verse 68. And the promises was given to the Israelites. What promise? Okay. Let's see. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, uh -huh. for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Go ahead. And have raised up an horn of salvation uh -huh. for us mm -hmm. in the house of his servant David, uh -huh. as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To do what? The mercy promise to our fathers. That's the promise that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promise to our fathers. Read. And to remember his holy covenant. And to remember his holy covenant. Them covenants also in Romans chapter 9. Whew, that's beautiful. Read. The oath which he swear to our father Abraham. Read. That he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, <laughs> Go might ahead. serve him without fear Read. in holiness uh -huh. and righteousness before him. So the only way to, tr to truly serve the Lord without fear is to be taken from our enemies. Because at work right now, you can't wear your friend is out open. If they do let you do that, now praise to the Lord. They always asking you questions about why don't you celebrate this? Why don't you why don't you come around for that? Why can't you work on Saturday? They got all these questions. You can't even just serve the Lord without fear. You got to get a letter to for exemption. You got to get, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like. You can't even really just be yourself. You can't talk about what you want to talk about because all your co-workers are going to snitch on you. Say, he ain't here talking about white folks or the devil. He ain't here saying that the kingdom of heaven only for black folk. He ain't here talking about Jesus Christ black. They'll go tell on you, especially the black woman. She will snitch. And the coon Negro, he'll go tell Massa. So we're trying to get out of here so we can serve the Lord without fear of losing our job, losing our livelihood, not being able to take care of our families, born into poverty. You understand? Go back. Romans chapter 9. And verse 5 now. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Go ahead. Whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers? Those promises are the fathers. Go ahead. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Give, uh, go ahead. Who is over all God, blessed forever. So, go ahead. Amen. Hebrews seven fourteen. It said, whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Christ came from who? The children of Israel. Let's see. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. It's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. It's a fact. Christ came from the lineage of Judah. Go back real quick to Matthew chapter 1. I want you to read verse 1. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the son of David, mm. the son of Abraham. Read. Abraham begot Isaac, uh -huh. and Isaac begot Jacob, uh -huh. and Jacob begot Judas. And Jacob begot Judas, which is Judah. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6. And Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Now I want you to skip down to verse 16. Verse 16. 
And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. Skip down to 21. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, uh -huh. and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So is she going to bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Go ahead. For he shall save his people. He's going to save his people. Read. From their sins. From their sins. Read again. They're going to do what? We're going to do what? For he shall save his people from their sins. He's going to save his people from their sins. For whom as concerned the flesh, Christ came. Christ came from the lineage of the children of Israel. Right? Go to Acts chapter 13, verse 23 and 22, or 22 and 23. The book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. Yeah, go ahead. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, and to, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Breathe. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, Raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. You see that Israel had a Savior that came from the lineage of David as it was promised. Right? Go back to Romans 9 and 6. Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Pick up at 6 now, yep. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Go ahead. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Go ahead. Watch this. Go to uh, John chapter 8, verse 33. It said they are not all Israel that are of of. Of Israel. Come on. John chapter 8, verse 33. Go ahead. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. We be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. So they speaking bold. They said, we Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. Did you finish that part? How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Skip down to 37. Verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Christ said, I know. I know you're Abraham's seed, unfortunately. Go ahead. But ye seek to kill me, because my word have no place in you. Because, But you want to kill me, though. Right? Watch this. Keep reading. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Mm, go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Abraham our father. We Israelites. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. If you were Abraham's children, you would do his works. You have faith. Go ahead. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Read. Ye do the deeds of your father. Go ahead. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We ain't born of fornication. We have one father. We only got one father. Read. Even God. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Read. Why did ye not, why did ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Read. Ye are of your father. The devil. See, you are your father, the devil. You follow the Romans. That's who you follow. You follow your, the, your father, the devil, who then gave you a place in this society. Therefore, you don't want to believe on the Son of God. Go ahead. And the lust of your father, ye will do. And you're going to do the lust of your father, too. Now, and we know that's evident because they got him killed and, and li or they got him uh, um, arrested and then passed over to the white man to be crucified. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Come on, man. Speak that mic, man. Come on. I'm in the spirit. Come on, man. But he, he is a liar and the father of and it. he a liar and the father of it. Watch this. Go from there. Give me Acts chapter 13. I want you to read verse 27. So when it said they are not all Israel that are of Israel, meaning some Israelites would not believe on Christ. Some of the children of Israel, although they are Abraham's seed, although they do come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they, do, they are Israelites. They were born Israelites. They do have a tribe, but they don't believe on the Son of God. Same thing today. Go ahead. Acts chapter 13, verse 27. Yes, sir. For they that dwell at Jerusalem. They that dwell at Jerusalem, those are Jews. Go ahead. And their rulers. And their rulers. Go ahead. Because they knew him not. Uh-huh. Nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. Go ahead. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. So since they didn't know the, they didn't understand the voice of the prophets, since they didn't know Christ, then they, since they didn't know God, they fulfilled the scriptures in killing him. I mean, all the scriptures that was uh, written about Christ being uh, uh, crucified, they were the ones that fulfilled that. Damn. Go ahead. And though they found no cause of death in him, Read. yet desired they pilot that he should be slain. So they knew he wasn't, they knew he was innocent, but they, they lied on him. Go ahead. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree uh -huh. and laid him in a sepulcher. Read. But God raised him from the dead. Now watch this. Go from there. Uh, read verse 46. So it says, 
All these things happen. That's those brothers and sisters that did that, that hated Christ. Them brothers and sisters are not of Israel. You understand? Those same spirits back on the earth today where they don't believe. Right? Come on. Acts chapter 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So those, those southern kingdom brothers and sisters in that synagogue that he was speaking to while the, while the, the northern kingdom was standing there, he said, y'all don't even consider yourselves worthy. Those Jews, they were trying to pray. They were blaspheming and, and contradicting the things that Paul was teaching regarding Christ. He said, look, man, I'm going to dust my feet off on y'all, brothers. The Gentiles want us to come back next Sabbath and teach this. But shoot, y'all don't consider yourselves worthy. It was needful that it came to you, Judah, first. But you don't consider yourself worthy. We're going to turn to the Gentiles, man. They are not all Israel that are of Israel, right? Go back to Romans 9. Let's read 7 now. Romans chapter 9, verse 7. So this destroys Christianity. If you, if you can't see it, it's clear. It's right there before your eyes, right? Romans 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? Mm -hmm. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So it said, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Come on. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, Read. these are not the children of God. Go ahead. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So we more than conquerors because we get persecuted for Christ's name's sake. But everybody that's a part of the Israelites is not going to go through that. The elect going to go through that. Now he's going into, well, also, on the flip side, not only are there Israelites out here that aren't Israelites who are not the elect, the mother nations ain't got nothing to do with this promise or these covenants or the glory or the adoption or the giving of the law or the service of God either. You understand? Watch this. Go from there. You read 7 and 8 together, right? We read both of them, yes, sir. You did read, read 7 and 8? Yes, sir. All right. So it said, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise accounted for the seed. Watch this. Go to Romans, I mean, um, Genesis 16. Read 15. Because Abraham had more children than just Isaac. I don't understand what Christians are talking about. Genesis 16, 15. The book of Genesis, chapter 16 and verse 15. Watch this. And Hagar bare Abram a son. Uh -huh. And Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. So he called his son's name Ishmael. The son that he bare by Hagar, his name was Ishmael. Go to chapter 25, verse 1 through 6. Genesis chapter 25, verse 1. Yes, sir. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begot Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, and, and Latushim, and Leamim. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Ephah, and Hanah, and Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. What did he do? Gave all that he had unto Isaac. <laughs> Go ahead. But unto the sons of the concubines. His other sons. Which Abraham had. Uh -huh. Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. So he said, y'all got to get away from Isaac. That's the one right there. Watch this. Go to chapter 21, verse 1. So Abraham had other children, brothers and sisters. He had Ishmael. He had, uh, what is that, Midian, Medan. He had other, Jokshan. He had other other children outside of, of, of Isaac, right? So when, when people say, oh, well, everybody's a child of God, that's not the truth. Because just because they come from Abraham's lineage don't mean they're a child of God. So what about the Hamites and the, and, uh, the Japhites? They definitely not children of God. Everybody that's a Shemite is not a children of God. Elam is not a children of God. The only children of God are the ones that came from Isaac and then Jacob. We're going to show you that. Keep reading. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, mm -hmm. and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Go ahead. For Sarah conceived and bare Abram, Abraham a son in his old age. Go ahead. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. Read. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. 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 That's why I said he the children of the promise. It was promised that she was going to bear a son in her old age. God fulfilled his word on that promise. That's why it says, for Sarah conceived and bare uh, Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. And they called his name Isaac. Now skip down what I had. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, 
Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. Talking about uh, Ishmael, because Ishmael had to go. Read. And because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. For what? In Isaac shall thy seed your, be called. Your seed going to be called through Isaac. Now skip over to chapter 22, verse 15 right quick. Genesis chapter 22, verse 15. Watch the wording. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time uh -huh. and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. That wait, it, wait, wait, wait. You got to read that again. They missed it. Read that again. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. It's the Lord speaking. Go ahead. For because thou hast done this thing. Read. And has not withheld thy son, Read. thine only son. Thine only son. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That ain't his only son. He had Ishmael too. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. When a Christian come up and try to tell you, especially a black Christian, that all nations are going to be saved and all nations are the children of Abraham, that's a lie. That's not the truth. Only in Isaac shall, God, shall Abraham's seed be called, man. Keep reading. Watch this. That in blessing, I will bless thee. Uh -huh. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. Stop. What seed? The Israelites. The one that came through Isaac. Go ahead. As the stars of the heaven. So who going to be as the stars of heaven? The Israelites that came through Isaac. Go ahead. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. And, and who going to be uh, as the sand of the seashore? The Israelites that came through Isaac. Go ahead. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Who is his enemies? Those other nations outside of the nation of Israel that didn't come through Isaac. That's, I don't understand you. I'm trying to figure out what the hell you're doing. Stop smoking crack. Stop going to that Christian church. It's like lighting up crack. You understand? You a junkie for the Christian church, man. Damn. Church junkie. Read. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because the children of Israel will possess the gates of all their enemies. You understand that? Also, the children of Israel will be scattered amongst all their enemies. So in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, meaning in thy seed, meaning Christ. When Christ came, all the Israelites, no matter in what nation, they, we read that earlier in Acts 10, it's a beautiful thing. Acts chapter 10, it said, for in every nation, he that feareth him, right? So just read Acts 10, 35 again, man. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Get, get Acts 10, 35 again. I don't think they heard it. I don't think they remember. Acts chapter 10, verse 35. Acts chapter 10, verse 35. Come on. But in every nation, he that feared him and worked righteousness is accepted with him. Mm. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So that in every nation... That and in, 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 I, I see shall all nations of the earth be blessed. It's talking about when Christ came, those that believe on Christ, those that fear the Lord and work righteousness of the children of Israel will be saved. I don't see how, I don't see how hard that is. It don't seem hard to me, but, you know, I guess when you smoke crack every day or every Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible crack and uh, Sunday morning crack worship, you understand, I guess uh, uh, vacation uh, crack, crack school, I guess you just... <laughs> VCS, vacation crack school. That's what you're going to. You ain't learn a damn thing in them churches. Run, brothers and sisters, run. All right, go back to, um, so go back to uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 7 again. Romans chapter 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac, Isaac. Shall thy seed be called? For Isaac shall thy seed be called. For Isaac shall thy seed be called. Go ahead. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. Those are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. Read. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Who are the children of the promise? Read 9 and 4 again. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, the adoption and the glory, and the, glory and, the covenants, and the covenants and the giving of the law read, and the service of God read, and the promises. And the promises. Also, what we read in Genesis earlier, it said, thy seed shall possess the, the uh, gates of their enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. 
because thou hast obeyed my voice. The promise was given to the seed of Abraham that came through Isaac, which ended up becoming Jacob. Now, you might say, well, didn't Isaac have Jacob and Esau? I thought he had both of them. He did have both of them. Watch this. Go to Romans 9 and 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. For this is the word of promise. Uh -huh. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. So it went from Abraham to Isaac. Now go ahead. For the children being not yet born. So these children that came from Isaac weren't born yet. Go ahead. Neither having done any good or evil. And they had done nothing good or evil for God to say one was righteous and one was wicked because of what they had done. Read. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Purpose of God according to election might stand. Go ahead. Not of works. Not of works. But of him that calleth. But of him that calleth. That's a beautiful scripture. I love that scripture. Read that scripture again. I love that. For the children being not yet born. Neither having done any good or evil. Go ahead. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Read. Not of works. Not of works. But him that calleth. Read. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. It was said unto her, the elder child is going to serve the younger child. Let's deal with a few precepts. Go to Genesis 25, verse 21. So it's telling you from the beginning that Isaac, his children, Jacob and Esau, God was going to elect whom he was going to elect. It wasn't because neither one of them did good or evil. It was all according to the purpose of God. It was his will. Right? Watch this. Genesis 25 and 21. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Isaac entreated the Lord of his, for his wife. So Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Go ahead. Because she was barren. Because she was barren. She couldn't have no kid. Go ahead. And the Lord was entreated of him. Uh -huh. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So he prayed for his wife and she conceived a child. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two nations in your womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And there are two manner of people that are going to be separated from your bowels. These children are going to be different. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other and people. And there's going to be a people that come out of those two that's going to be stronger than the other one. He's going to be stronger than his twin brother. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the younger. You hear that? And the elder shall serve the younger. From the beginning, the Lord already prophesied this thing. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. Behold, there were twins in her womb. Read. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And the first came out red like all over like a hairy garment. That is the so-called nation of uh, the so-called white man, the nation of Edom, Esau. Come on. And they called his name Esau. Read. And after that came his brother out. Uh-huh. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Read. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bathed him. So when Esau came out, Jacob said, oh, hell no. Get your ass back in here. We ain't done fighting. <laughs> Jacob was in there whooping his ass, clinging him up. Cling, 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 cling. He's like, man, let me out. Let me out. Let me out first. He came out. Jacob done snatched his heel. Give me your he ain't getting out of here without me. You understand? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm exaggerating that. That's not, it didn't say that. But that's just what I thought. Go ahead. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man mm -hmm. dwelling in tents. Because Jacob was already king. King ain't got to go to war. You go out there and hunt. Peon, hairy man, red man, you go out there and do it. I'm going to just fall back. I'm chilling, man. Hey, what, what, what y'all cooking over there, man? Chill in the tent. <laughs> I could just see it. I know Jacob's tent was turnt too. I know he had, <laughs> I know he had all everything laid out or whatever. He probably was just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Had him a little probably he probably slayed a lion. You know, I can't, you know, I can't go to war if I wanted to. Right out of slayed him a lion and skinned him, got the lion, you know, the lion skin rug. He just in there chilling. He Esau come back huffing and puffing, red, mad, hungry. Go ahead. And Isaac loved Esau mm -hmm. because he did eat of his venison. Go ahead. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sighed pottage. And Esau came from the field. And Go he ahead. was faint. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, mm -hmm. for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Breed. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Mm -hmm. And Esau said, behold. I am at the point to die. I'm about to die? Hit it away. Go ahead. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And what, this, uh, what the hell? What am I doing with this birthright? It don't mean that I'm about to die anyway. Go ahead. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. Swear to me this day. And he swear to him. And he sold his birthright mm. unto Jacob. 
Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. Go ahead. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Esau started, man, he held that damn birthright. I ain't want it anyway. But Jacob didn't steal it. Because we read in Romans chapter 9 that the elder was going to have to serve the younger. That not because they had done any good or evil, but that God's purpose and his will should be done by, by course of election. Right? Watch this. Go from there. Go to Isaiah 46 and 10. That's the Lord's will for Esau to serve Jacob. From the beginning. Most high do what he want to do. He ain't got to ask you nothing. Damn Christians. Well, God should ask permission before he said he hated Esau. All right. Will you tell him that on Judgment Day? Uh, <laughs> Isaiah 46 and 9. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9. Come on. Remember the former things of old, mm -hmm. for I am God. I'm God, read. And there's none else. There ain't none else either. Come on. I am God, read. And there's none like me. Ain't none like me. Go ahead. Declaring the end from the beginning. I'm so cold, I declare the end from the beginning. I have you reading stuff now that about the future from way back in ancient times. Remember, our forefather, John the Revelator, wrote Revelation in 96 AD. He ain't never seen some of that stuff. He's just trying to describe it the best he can. Oh, that like a locust. That like a, you understand? Fire coming down from heaven. I don't know what them things are. They look like sharp swords or something. You know, he don't even know what he's looking at. He just write it down to the best of his ability. That's how cold the most high is. He give you a vision of something. He tells Cyrus, yeah. Or he tell Isaiah, I'm going to call his name Cyrus. Then Isaiah die. Ezra come into play and Cyrus take over. Then he go back and read Isaiah. I said, damn, he said, he said, he said my mama going to call me Cyrus. This the God. Let them back in their land. That's how cold the most high is. He just say something and then, you know, a thousand years later it happened. You're like, dang. He said it was going to go down like this. So now he's saying declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times. Go ahead. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, really, go ahead. Saying, my counsel shall stand. It's going to happen like I say because it's my counsel. Go ahead. And I will do all my pleasure. And I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. I'm God. I can do it the way I want to do it. And I'm telling you that them children didn't do nothing wrong. Esau and Jacob didn't do nothing wrong. But I love Jacob. I'm raising him up. That's going to be the one. And Esau going to have to serve him. And Esau going to be red and hairy. No melanin. And Esau going to be out on the field a cunning hunter. And his blessing is going to be the sword. That's it. Who are you to say anything to me? That's what the Most High telling us right here. Go back or go to uh, election. Because remember, say according to election, who is God's elect? Isaiah 45 and, and, and 4. We read it earlier. I'm going to read it again. Romans, I'm going to shut it down at verse 13. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, mm -hmm. and Israel, mine elect, uh -huh. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So watch this. Go back to uh, Romans chapter 9. I want you to pick up verse 12 now. So we see, according to the election, God elected the Israelites. That's his elect. You can't get mad at that. And not only the Israelites, those that believe on his son are his elect. Because all Israel ain't Israel. So they're not the elect. The elect is those that believe on his son, keep the commandments that Paul said, I'm sorrowing for because they're going to get persecuted. They're going to go through tribulation. But, but there is no condemnation because they walk in Christ Jesus. That's the context. That's the context. All Israel are not going to be saved but those that believe on Christ. Now watch this. Go back to Romans chapter 9. I want you to pick up at verse 12 now. Romans chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Now go to the book of 2nd Edges chapter 6, verse 7. 2nd Edges chapter 6, verse 7. Then we're going to read verse 13, and uh, we'll be done. The book of 2nd Edges chapter 6. I got a few precepts for, for verse 12. Go ahead. 6 and verse 7. Then answered I and said, mm -hmm. what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Go ahead. Or when shall be the end of the first? What's going to be the end of this, this last kingdom on earth? And the beginning of it that follows. And the beginning of the kingdom that follows when Christ rules. Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, mm -hmm. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. We just read that. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. Because Esau, is the, it was symbolic. When Jacob grabbed Esau's heel as he came out first, this is why Esau came out first. You understand that? Because he's going to be the last ruling kingdom before who come out? Jacob. Come on, man. Read again. 
But Esau is the end of the world. Go ahead. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau, the end of the world, that's why Jacob grabbed his heel, because he the end, because the, the bottom of your heel, that's the end. That's the end of your body. So that was symbolic of him being the last kingdom before Christ returned and Jacob being the one that ruled after him. That's why it said in prophecy, the elder shall serve the younger. This is all of God's election. You can't go into the Bible and say, no, 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 they can be saved. No, no, please. No, please. They got to be saved. It don't matter. You can cry. You can do whatever you want to do. You can get mad. You can throw the Bible. You can be atheist. It don't matter. You understand? I just ain't going to believe that. Not my Jesus. Okay, well, just continue to believe that. But just know when the real Jesus come, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. Watch this. Uh, keep reading. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Uh huh. Other question, Ezra, ask thou not. So the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. I mean, all the other nations is just there. They like role playing. You know what I'm saying? They just like characters in a movie. They support characters. They they them people that you give like forty dollars to just stand on set, just stand on set and act like they're talking to somebody. Just you know what I'm saying? You know how you see people just the main character, the camera on them. You hear them speaking, but the other people just kind of just that's that's the other nations. It's really between us and Esau. That's who it's really against. That's why Esau keep us down and don't let nobody know we the Israelites. All right? And he hated when we say we the Israelites. Now, go from there. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 18. It said, the elder shall serve the younger. Let me go through a few precepts on that real quick. The book of Numbers, chapter 24, and verse 16. Yes, sir. He has said which he have said which heard the words of God, and he knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the you, Almighty. You at chapter 24, verse 18? I said 18, not 5. Yes, sir. 18. Verse 18. And Edom shall be a possession. So Edom going to be a possession. Edom going to be a possession. Go ahead. Sierra also shall be a possession for his enemies. Uh-huh. And Israel shall do valiantly. And Israel going to do valiantly, meaning what? The Israelites are going to possess and rule over the Edomites. That's prophecy. You understand? Watch this. Go from there. Uh, read verse 20. Verse 20. Did you read 19? No, sir. Read 19 and 20. Verse 19. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Go ahead. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. That's that nation that you read about in Isaiah 60 that said the nation that will not serve thee. He talking about Amalek because Amalek always been in our neck from the beginning. From the very beginning, the nation of Am the nation of Edom, which was the well, e Amalek, which is the grandson of the Edomites or grandson of Esau, he been against us from the beginning. The Lord said, "Yeah, he gonna perish forever. I'm gonna destroy him, off the face of the earth, and the rest of them too." But I don't want to get to that because that's later on in the chapter. Get better, get better. Watch this. Go to Acts. I mean Amos chapter nine verse eleven. So Edom gonna be a possession. That's how. The, that's why the scripture says he gonna serve us forever. The elders shall serve the younger, meaning the future kingdom, they're going to serve us 4,000 years. And then after that, they're going to be destroyed forever. It is what it is. They're going to get burned. Read that for me. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David mm -hmm. that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. Uh -huh. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Go ahead. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Go ahead. And of all the heathen, which are called by my name. Meaning those, those heathen, they call themselves Christians, and they call themselves Jews today, or Jewish today. The Lord said all of them going to be a possession. Read that again, verse 11, or verse 12, which the 12 you read. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Mm -hmm. And of all the heathen, which are called by my name. All the heathen, which are called by my name. Go ahead. Say the Lord that doth this. Say the Lord that doeth. This it was another uh, it was another scripture I was looking for, but don't worry about it. Uh, go to Romans nine thirteen now. Romans. So Edom gonna be a possession. They gonna they they the elder gonna serve the younger. That was our. I think it says. Hold on. Go to Ezekiel. Thirty seven. I mean uh, twenty five. This I knew it was somewhere. I knew it was something. Ezekiel thir uh, twenty five. Let me see. Uh, I want you to read verse. Oh, I'm on the wrong part, wrong side. Uh, Ezekiel 35, I want you to read 12. 
25, 12, excuse me. 25 and 12. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance uh -huh. and have greatly offended Go ahead. and revenged himself upon them. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. Go ahead. And will cut off man and beast from it. Mm. And I will make it desolate from Teman and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. Read. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. That's that hunters get them. Right. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Now, go, back to Rome, go back to Romans chapter 9. So why would the Lord speak so vehemently about how he going to destroy Edom and put his vengeance? Why the Lord so mad at Edom? Let's see. Go back to Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Because remember... It, it, it's not uh, because of um, they done any good or evil. The Lord hated him from the beginning. But God said from the beginning, I declare the end. I'm going to do all my pleasure. I love Jacob. I don't love y'all. Romans 9, 13. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Watch this. As it is written. As it is written. Jacob have I loved. Jacob have I loved, read. But Esau have I hated. Go to Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. But it ain't because Esau did anything wrong. God always hated him. <laughs> Always. Now, Edom, knowing that God hate them, trying to destroy us, trying to keep us from understanding who we are so they can continue to rule. You got that? Malachi 1. Yep, sir. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Uh huh. I have loved you, saith the Lord. I loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? How you love us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Says the Lord. Uh-huh. Yet I loved Jacob. Uh-huh. And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. Now, what do you read before that that God hated Esau? You understand that? Like, why is it that the Lord hated Esau? It's because his, his counsel going to stand. He going to do all his pleasure. You can't now all of a sudden insert Esau into the kingdom of heaven or insert Esau into salvation. You can't do that. The Lord said from the beginning... I hate Esau. The elder shall serve the younger. Now, why would he say, I'm going to destroy Edom, I'm going to destroy Amalek, the elder going to serve the younger, if he loved them? He's not going to say that. He's telling you from the beginning, this particular nation, I got a problem with them. Not because they did no good or no evil, but because I love Jacob and I just want it to happen that way. I created them to kill them. Some people say, well, that ain't right. Who was you? Who was thou, old man? <laughs> Read again, verse 3. Verse 3, and I hated Esau. And did what? And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Then he gave him the worst part of the earth. Read. For the dragons of the wilderness. Go ahead. Whereas Edom said. So when Edom heard that, or when Edom realized that, now his prophecy, his future prophecy, well, go ahead. We are impoverished. We are impoverished. But we will return and build the desolate places. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build. They shall build. But I will throw down. But I'm going to throw down. Read. And they shall call them. The border of wickedness. And they're going to call them the border of wickedness. When people see them clearly, they're going to say, man, them folks evil. That's a wicked nation right there. Go ahead. And the people. And the what? The people. And the people. Read. Against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Against the. Uh, woo, read again. Read that part again. And the people. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So what I mean, I'm trying to figure out, like, how they going to make it? The Lord says he has indignation against them forever, unless forever don't mean forever. I, don't, I just, I don't understand. Unless forever don't mean forever. Now, Romans chapter 9 confirms everything. When you go to Romans 9, Paul gives clear understanding of what the Lord meant when he said, I love Jacob and I hated Esau. It wasn't because they did any good or evil, but God, according to his purpose, according to his election. Go back to Romans 9 verse uh, 11 and 12 again. 11, 12, and 13, and we'll close out there. Then we'll pick up at verse 14 next week. This will be part one. We'll do 14 next week, 14 on down. Lord's will, Lord's will. But this is a destruction of Christianity. I don't understand how a Christian is going to get out of this. Read that for me. Romans chapter 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. Read. Not of works, but of him that calleth. Go ahead. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. 
right? So the Lord, by his own will, what he wanted, you understand? He chose Jacob. He chose Esau to hate, and he chose Jacob to love. So I hope you brothers and sisters got something from that, all right? With that, we say shalom. Most high in Christ bless you all, family. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.